The field data from tensiometers and the Guelph permeameter can be combined to calculate flux in the Veda zone. In order to start, I'm going to assume that we have data from five tensiometers, shown here in this column, uh, at different depths, shown here. And this table is the way to analyze those data to get the total head. This analysis is covered in a different video, so I'm going to assume that you know how to fill out this table and calculate the total head. So with that, what I'm going to do is calculate these um, values in Excel. So I just took the table that we saw in the previous slide and put it in Excel. And here, this shows the, the worksheet. Now, on the next slide here, um, what I've done is to just simply for, um, for clarity, I've um, I, I blanked out the cells out here in Excel. This is just a, an Excel worksheet, though, with, the, with it blanked out so that we can see. And what I'm doing is setting up a worksheet that has the calculations in it. And I'm assuming that this shaded region here is where you would put the data. So these are the gauge readings here from the tensiometers. And if you put them in, these, all, these cells all have the necessary calculations, and so they would be updated. So this would be a, a, a worksheet that you could use for multiple different calculations. So the first thing that I did was to modify this so that I would calculate the head gradient. And the head gradient is there in, in this column. And the gradient is dh dz. And in this case, this column is given uh, is z. And so z is starting at the bottom and going upward like that. And so if I have multiple tensiometers, then I've started z uh, at, the, at the bottom of the deepest tensiometer. And so z of 0 is at the deepest tensiometer given there. OK, and so this is the head gradient calculated using a backward finite difference. And I can show you how I did that. So here's the column that I just showed you. And this is going to be the gradient calculated using a backward finite difference. And so what I've done is uh, put the cursor on this cell right there. And then up here, you can see the formula that's used to calculate the gradient in, in that cell. And you can see here with these color blocks that what's, what's happening is, let's see, it's M21 minus M20. So that right there is M21, and that's M20. So it's the difference between those two divided by the difference between those two. OK, so that's dhdz. And when I go to calculate that, I get this right here, this column. And essentially, I did the same thing right here in this column that's called head gradient. I just have one more significant figure shown in the head gradient column than the dhdz. Okay, so it, it's calculating it automatically using finite differences, and um, it'll it'll update if we change the gauge readings. Okay, so we want to determine flux, so we've got to use Darcy's law, and that requires that we know the head gradient and the hydraulic conductivity, and the hydraulic conductivity will vary with the moisture content, so we need a way to figure that out. And what I've done here is, if we look up here at the top. We're going to use the Gardner equation for the hydraulic conductivity where the pressure head is less than zero. And this formula right here is the Gardner equation. Basically, what it's saying is that the hydraulic conductivity is an exponential function of the um, saturated hydraulic conductivity. And actually, I see a typo right there. Let's just get rid of that. Forget about that, and here's the Gardner equation. Here's what that should say. It says K sat times E to the alpha P over gamma. Okay? For some reason up there, uh, the E didn't show up. So it's an exponential function, 
and it applies where the pressure head is negative so this will be always always negative where the Gardner equation is used so if we were to plot this it would be well let's plot it like this okay as a function of P over gamma then it would look like this so there's negative P over gamma, and negative pressure head, and then for positive pressure head, so this is zero. This is this is positive. We just get that, and this is this is then the saturated conductivity. Okay, so that's what Gar what the Gardner equation says the conductivity plot would look like. Okay, so what we do then, well, what we need is Ksat the saturated conductivity, and this term alpha. So Ksat is what we can get from the Guel for the mini disk. And alpha we can estimate using the Guelph data in some cases. If the Guelph data give us, if we can use that first method in the Guelph calculation, then we can determine alpha. Otherwise, we have to estimate alpha from a table that's given in the Guelph um, worksheet. So Either way, we're going to come up with an estimate of alpha and put put the data there along with Ksat. And then what I've done is to calculate in this column right here, I use this formula to calculate the hydraulic conductivity. And I do it actually, I use this formula in three places, there, there, and there. And in this row, I just use Ksat. It's just equal to Ksat. And the reason for that is if we go over here to this column and look at the pressure head, the pressure head in these three rows is negative, and here it's positive. So what that means is that the, there's a water table right in here between these two depths and it's going to be closer to 90 than to 120 and so we could interpolate perhaps and, and get an estimate for where the water table is so this is kind of cool because what it means is that we've used these tensiometers to monitor both the Vado zone and the saturated zone so if we have five tensiometers like this then it means that there's a water table that occurs right in here like that so this is the Vados, and this is saturated. Okay, and so what, we, what it means then with the calculation of K is that the Gardner equation is applying to these up here, and we just don't need that exponential term. We just assign K is equal to Ksat for these, uh, these last two bottom ones that are, that are in the saturated zone. Okay, so that's what's going on, and I just did that. I just I just went and inspected the pressure heads, and because I had positive pressure heads, I realized that I wasn't going to use the Gardner equation, that I was instead going to use just just going to set it equal to Ksat. Okay, so that's what's going on. Um, there, if, if you know Excel, there are fancier ways of doing that so that it will automatically. Um, use the Gardner equation if the pressure head is negative and use K equals Ksat if it's positive but I, I'm just doing it manually here and that that will work fine for what you need to do too okay so this is what we've got now we've got the head gradient and we've got K and so we can multiply those two together to get the flux and this is this is what we have and it's just the this this row here that value of flux 10 to the minus 12 meters per second is just the product of this one and this one that k and that gradient and what what you see is in this example that i'm showing the flux at shallow depths is very small compared to flux deeper down so we have 10 to the minus 6 meters per second for the flux uh, down here in the saturated zone. And we've got a 
We've got essentially six orders of magnitude less flux at shallow depths where the soil is much drier. And the reason for that is, we can see that right here, the reason for that is that the hydraulic conductivity has dropped by a lot, um, by many orders of magnitude in when the soil has dried out. Okay, so that gives us now a picture of what the vertical flux is like in the Vedo zone at this particular location. We can determine what the direction of the flux is. Um, by convention, if we've done everything right, a positive flux will be, if this is z, if z is upwards, a positive flux will be in the positive z direction. So this flux should all be going upward, but we can also check that by going here and looking at the head. And we see that the highest head here is at the bottom, and the head is getting lower as we go in this direction. So the, head, the flow is always going from high total head to low total head. So an upward flow is consistent um, with the head distribution. OK, now keep in mind, too, that in the Vedo zone, we may have upward flow at in some places and downward flow at other places. If it were to rain and uh, we were to saturate this or, or we were to raise the moisture content, we wouldn't even have to saturate, raise the moisture content here at this tensiometer, we would we would drop that value and that would that would cause this to be less negative and that would increase the head. So we could potentially have downward flow at shallow depths and upward flow at greater depths. Okay, so this is our example, and we are, we've used our field data to calculate the flux, flux profile. And I think it's also useful to plot these data. So, so this is just the Excel worksheet, and I made the cells, there are cells here, but I just made them white so that it was easier to see. And right here, this is the block that I've been showing you, but I just went over uh, right next to that and made these plots and this is these are various different plots showing the data and so we'll zoom in on those plots but uh, just keep in mind I'm gonna post the this worksheet so you can go and find all of this stuff but if you're if you're just looking right here you won't see these plots you'll have to scroll over to the right in order to see them so here's the first two or first four sets of, of plots it's the these four right here and what I wanted to show here was just the pressure head and the total head as a function of plotted as a function of depth here and plotted as a function of elevation here. So what we see is the pressure head is um, is increasing as you go down, um, and the total head is also increasing as you go down. Uh, the the plot looks similar. Um, and that's because the pressure head is, is quite, quite a large negative number compared to the elevation head. So pressure head is really dominating in this case. But nevertheless, we have these two plots, and this may be a useful way to think about it because we're plotting it um, with respect to depth, which is how, we are, how we're measuring the tensiometers. But it also may be better to think about it in terms of, uh, of Z, of elevation. So basically, this plot is, is increasing downward. This is the ground surface right here, and this is going down. With this plot, this is the, the deepest tensiometer, and this is going up. And in this case, the ground surface is right here. OK, so I, I prefer this plot because we can go and, and if we look at this lower right-hand corner, the gradient is the slope of this line right here. Okay, so when we calculate the gradient using that finite difference, we're using these two data points here and calculating the slope. And so we get one gradient, another one, another one, and another one. Okay, so that's how, that's how we did it. And I think that it's easier to recognize how that works if you think of the plot of total head as a function of the elevation, this plot here. Okay, so we now want to get the um, head gradient. And so I calculated the head gradient and made a plot of it. And that's what's being shown here. So the gradients are 
uh, all negative and that ranges from a little bit less than 0.5 uh, here at shallow depths to um, up to uh, I don't know that's about minus 2.6 or 2.7 something like that um, so these gradients are similar and then we get a, a steepening of the gradient um, for the, the shallowest one and then we take the product of the head gradient and K and calculate the flux as a function of Z and here's the result uh, you have the flux being pretty similar right here it drops and then on this plot it's essentially zero here at at shallower depths and so this plot here it's the same data as I'm showing here except I wanted to actually see what was going on with these points right here so I just used a log scale the y-axis is a log scale on on this plot but it's essentially the same as the plot that I just showed you and now you can see I think a little bit better what's happening with these two shallow data points the flux is is going like this and then and then dropping off and it's dropping off now as a smooth curve but um, you can you can see that this is now here many orders of magnitude six or, or so orders of magnitude less than uh, what the flux is up here okay so that allows you to display these data and that'll help to interpret and understand what they're telling you one thing that you should keep in mind is that what I've assumed here is that the hydraulic conductivity is uniform all the way down in many cases you would have data that would vary the K data would vary as a function of depth uh, and if that's the case then each one of these cells right here may have its own value of uh, K sat uh, e to the alpha p over gamma and so uh, what what may happen is that k sat or alpha may vary depending upon what depth you're you're at and so it's straightforward to modify this to account for that you would just need to use different values of k sat and alpha uh, for each layer